Hello and welcome to Faith United Church of Christ in Center Valley, Pennsylvania. We are blessed and honored by your decision to tune in for this service of worship today, and we hope it is a blessing to you. Obviously, we, we wish we could be gathering here in our sanctuary, but once again, due to the quarantine connected to the COVID pandemic going on in our country right now, that's not possible. So we long for the day in which we can gather and see each other face to face and hear each other's voices, but that is not true for today. However, we do believe that there is nothing limiting the Holy Spirit's ability to gather us and create a sense of community and fellowship and spirit among us. So we call upon the Holy Spirit to grant that sense of grace among us right now. Before we go any further, I do have a few announcements, and the first is to say thank you to, say thank you to Matthew Ware, who's playing our organ today. Also to Connor Lickerack, who's playing his harp today and to Autumn Kant, who is editing the program today. Also, if you want to follow along with any of the liturgy of the service or the words of the hymns, you can find those on the email that went out on Constant Contact. You would have received that if you're on the Faith Church email mailing list. If you are not, you can still find that by going to our website, which is faithchurchucc.org. Again, that's faithchurchucc.org. All of that material you can find on our website as, and as well through the email. Now, one more thing, and that is there is a tradition here at Faith Church. Those of you who are members here and attend here regularly, you will be... Uh, very familiar with this if you're coming from a faraway place and this is something new then i will tell you all about it and that is pie sunday pie sunday is when some of the greatest bakers in our congregation bake these magnificent pies and bring them to church on sunday morning and in the fellowship hall following our service of worship we enjoy just these marvelous pies, maybe a slice, maybe two slices, maybe three slices. I know some who've been willing to go to even further than that, um, but I shouldn't be so rough on myself. <laughs> Nevertheless, uh, today is Pie Sunday, and we're going to do it virtually this year through a, a Zoom meeting. So if you want to participate, uh, all you need to do is to send your email to me to Pastor Bruce at faithchurchucc.org. Now, what I'm going to suggest you do is you pause this recording right now and you send me that email so that I can set you up on the invite that will go out uh, shortly after this service. Pi Sunday will start at 12 o'clock noon Eastern Time. Okay, I think that's all the announcements that I have, and so now let us prepare for worship. For this world is yours, planned in eternity, created in a moment of sheer exuberance, permeated with love, well made, this place is yours in its simplicity, blue sky and countryside, pure creativity, painted with care, well made. This day is yours, pure generosity given for moments of gentle direction in the bustle of a day well made. This moment is yours in its entirety, a drop of time in an ocean of history gifted with joy well made.
join me in our call to worship, which once again is available to you on the constant contact email that was sent to you or on our website. People are often unreasonable and self-centered. Forgive them anyway. With God's love, be a blessing. If you are kind, people may accuse you of ulterior motives. Be kind anyway. If you are honest, people may cheat you. Be honest anyway. With God's love, be a blessing. If you find happiness, people may be jealous. Be happy anyway. With God's love, be a blessing. The good you do today may be forgotten tomorrow. With God's love, be a blessing. Do good. Give the world the best you have, and it may never be enough. Give your best anyway. With God's love, be a blessing. For you see, in the end, it is between you and God. It was never between you and them anyway. With God's love, be a blessing. Let us worship God. God does not desire any distance between us. God desires that we might be drawn closer to him, into fellowship with him. The way into this intimacy with God is through confession. Let us together say this prayer of confession. God of blessings, we often do not recognize all the blessings you have given. Sometimes we fail to answer the call to be a blessing as you have called us to do. Sometimes we stop the blessings with ourselves, not allowing them to flow through us. In your love and strength, we have chosen to be a blessing to another. Help us to complete the blessings task that you have chosen for each of us and to make a difference in the life of another, ourselves, our community, and the world. Amen. Anyone in Christ becomes a new person altogether. The past is gone. Everything becomes fresh and new. Friends, believe in the promise of the gospel and declare your forgiveness in the eyes of a holy and righteous God. Amen. Old Testament Psalm 116 verses 1 through 4 and 12 through 19. I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came over me. I was overcome by distress and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. Lord, save me. What shall I return to the Lord for all his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful, faithful servants. Truly, I am your servant, Lord. I serve you just as my mother did. You have freed me from my chains. I will sacrifice a thank, of, a thank offering to you and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. New Testament, Luke 24, verses 13 through 35. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. 
They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know how the things have happened there in these days? What things? he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed, before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it, just as the woman had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, How foolish are you, and how slow do, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave to give it to them. Then their eyes were open and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while, we talked with, while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to, Jer to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together, and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way, and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. Well, hello boys and girls. It is time for the children's sermon, so if you're not at the computer or your tablet, or at your um, smartphone, now's the time to get on so that you can participate in the children's sermon. So let me see, who am I looking for? I'm hoping that Morrison's out there with his Sunday morning root beer float and your brother Wylan. And I'm hoping I see uh, Damon and Carly. And I'm hoping I see Brandon. And I'm hoping that I see Lily. And um, I'm hoping that I see Owen and Isabel, and maybe your cousins are here today. I don't know. Uh, are they here today? Let's, let's hope so. Well, I have a few things um, that I want to show you. And I brought this in a few weeks ago, and that's a puzzle that I have been working on. And here it is. It has like many, many parts to it and I told you when I first brought it in that there was a piece missing it's a piece that goes right here and I have not been able to find it yet I'm still looking for it and you know I don't care how many pieces I put together a puzzle is not complete until it's all together even if one tiny piece is missing it means the puzzle is not completed so let's hope that I find that and that I can complete it. But in the meantime, I decided to just press on and to keep on going and hopefully that piece will just kind of show up. So in the meantime, since I last brought that in here, I put together all of these different pieces that will eventually, you know, I've got them here and there's more actually, but um, there's quite a few pieces that I've put together, and eventually they're all gonna fit into the main part that I've already shown you. Um, I have a question for you. Do you have any idea what this puzzle is yet? Do, I mean, do you have any idea what it's going to be or what it's supposed to look like once it's all done? I wonder if you have any guesses about that. I'll tell you what, if you have a guess, 
why don't you email it to me? Once again, my email is pastorbruce at faithchurchucc.org. But in the meantime, just for this morning, I was thinking about this. And I guess I said this already, but I'm starting to realize this even more than I did when I first brought the puzzle in when I said a puzzle isn't complete unless every piece is there, I realize now with all of these pieces, no matter how tiny they are, how impossible it would be without all of these things working together. You see, each of these things is going to have a job to do in order for the puzzle to work. The church is just like that. The church is kind of like a puzzle. Each and every one of us in the church has a role to play. Now, here's this part. And, you know, it may look a little bit like this part, but let's face it, it doesn't look anything like this part. But they need each other. We need each other in the church to do all of the different things that God calls us to do. So what's your part? We don't always know right away. It takes a while to figure that out. But God has given each and every one of us a role to play. I want you to think about that. What is your role? And you know, sometimes roles play. They change over a period of time. God may ask you to do something for 10 years. And then God may say to you, you know something? I've got something new I want you to try. So we have to be willing to hear God's voice that's leading us into different places and different tasks and different jobs. Yeah, this puzzle is reminding me an awful lot like the church. It's complicated. It hasn't been easy, but it's been beautiful to see it all come together. And let's continue to pray that I find that missing part. Okay? Let's say a prayer together. Gracious God, we thank you that you call us into the church. And no matter how tall we are, no matter how short we are, no matter how young we are, no matter how old we are, You've all given us a special role to play. Help us to discover that role and to do what we can for the glory of your name. Amen. Okay, thanks for participating. Good morning. I'm Connor Lickrack, and I will be playing a song called Mariage Delmour on the Heart.
Sometimes our own thinking creates a trap in our mind. It freezes us up, leaving us completely stuck where we are, impossible to move forward to whatever goal, objective, whatever hope or dream or vision or purpose that we might have. And yet, sometimes all we need is a, a simple hint, a small suggestion or a reminder that will enable us to get unstuck, that will free us up and allow us to move forward. When I was a freshman in, in college, I was taking a math class. And while taking an exam, I just got stuck. I was doing a problem and I was quite sure I was doing the problem correctly, but no matter what I did, it wasn't coming out. And I came to the conclusion that maybe there was something wrong with the exam. Maybe there was something actually wrong with the question itself. And so finally, I decided to step up and go to the professor. His name was Dr. Root. I'm telling you, if you can remember somebody for that, long of a period of time, well, they've made quite an impression on you. And he made an impression on me that day. I went up to Dr. Root and I said, you know, I'm, I'm not asking for the answer to this problem, but I just wanted, I just want you to see what I'm doing here. And I went by every step of this problem that was on the paper. And what Dr. Root did was, he didn't give me a hint, he didn't give me the answer. What he would do was he would ask the question that was on the paper. He asked it once and I said, yes, I know that, but, and then he asked it again and again and again. And I think it was around the fourth time when he asked the question where all of a sudden, I see it now. Just by simply asking the question those many times with patience and with understanding and a sense that he really wanted me to succeed, that I saw what I was looking for and I was able to get the answer. You see, I was frozen. And by simply patiently giving me a hint or a suggestion, just by asking the same question that every other student got, I was able to understand what I needed to do to finish the problem. A few days after the resurrection, there were a few people walking from Jerusalem to Emmaus, reflecting on everything that had happened over the last several days. And Jesus comes along to these people and simply asks, what are you talking about? Now, they didn't recognize that they were talking to Jesus. And so they just thought that maybe they were talking to a terribly uninformed stranger. And so they start to tell him everything that had happened over the last several days being completely astonished that this stranger is unaware of anything that was going on. But you see, their problem was that they were stuck in their thinking. They were stuck in thinking that Jesus' death was complete. They were stuck, you see, at the cross. They were so stuck at the cross that they couldn't even make any sense out of the empty tomb. They were forgetting that there is a prequel to the Gospels, first given by the prophets and then told by Jesus himself. And so Jesus becomes their Dr. Root, who Dr. Who Dr. Root was to me, Jesus is to them. And he does that simply by reading the words from the prophets. Haven't you read all of this, he says. And gradually, they start to realize that maybe there is something more to this, but 
they're still not sure. They're still feeling a sense of loss. They're still feeling like all the hopes that they had for being disciples of Christ, for grasping on to his story and believing in him, well, that it's lost. But then things open up right in front of their eyes. But amazingly enough, it doesn't happen as Jesus is explaining the teaching of the prophets or reminding them of the teaching that he does himself. It happens when he sits down with them to have a meal. And is, there is the breaking of the bread. And suddenly, as Jesus breaks bread with them, fellowship comes to happen. And it is through fellowship they realize that Christ has risen that the gospel story has not died, that the gospel story and the purpose of the gospel is alive and will continue. It was through fellowship with Christ and community with Christ that all of this becomes real and possible. There is a lesson for us in all of this. The lesson is simply this. If we deny ourselves the fellowship of believers, the community of believers, the experience of communal worship and prayer and breaking bread together, of coming to Christ's table, then we will never understand the meaning of the gospel and embrace its blessings and feel embraced and understood by God himself. You know, we work so hard around the church through so many things. We have yard sales. We have different parties. We have all sorts of crazy things that demand so much time and effort for us. And sometimes we get so worn down over doing all these things. But we have to remember what it's all about. These are the moments when we come together and we enjoy fellowship and we enjoy community together. And in fellowship and in community, we are blessed and we experience friendship and support and caring and compassion and laughter and companionship. But, you know, sometimes we might think that, you know, these things are available in other places that expect far less from us. We could go to other organizations and the community that won't expect so much from us that the church expects. Why not just go there? I would suggest to you that the Fellowship of Believers they don't end. That is something that stays with us forever. We can grasp onto it. It never gets old. Let me see if I can try and explain what I mean. Over my years, I have been a part of many organizations. And I have moved on because I didn't need to be a part of that organization any longer. A lot of those organizations had to do with my children and what they draw me into. For example, my son was in Little League and that demanded something of me, so I got involved. My son was in Cub Scouts, and that demanded something of me, so I got involved. My daughter was in Brownies, and that demanded something of me, so I got involved. She was involved in dance, and so that demanded something of me, and so I got involved. And so in the midst of being involved with all of these things, I met people, and I enjoyed the friendship. I enjoyed the support. I felt caring. I felt compassion, and we had lots of laughter together. There was true companionship in all of those things. 
But the day came when my son looked at me and said, you know, I think, I think I'm done with Little League. Or he said, I, I, I think I'm done with, I, I think I'm done with uh, Boy Scouts. Or my daughter said, you know, I'm not getting anything out of brownies any longer. And eventually she actually decided to give up dance. They just moved on to other things and that was all very good. But what happened at those moments is that as they said goodbye to these organizations, I did too. You see, they were a part of these organizations, but I, so was I. But when the time came for me to say goodbye, that fellowship was gone. That support and that caring, that compassion, all the laughter, that was gone. But when we make a commitment to be a part of the fellowship of believers, when we make a commitment for the community of the church, those blessings never escape us. The friendship never goes away. The support is always there. The caring is always there. The compassion is always there. The laughter never goes away. And the companionship remains the same. And that is because the bond created by the love of Christ, the purpose of the gospel, and the guidance of the Holy Spirit is stronger than anything else that has the capacity to draw us together. And so, today, I encourage you to listen to that voice that gives you the full story of the gospel, the story that came before, the story that came during, and the story that continues even today. And be a part of a community of fellowship, a community of believers that keeps this story alive in your hearts. Because once you step out, then the story ends. Amen. And now would you join me in this morning's affirmation of faith. In our waking and arising, be the first thought that enters our head. In our eating and drinking, be the first thought that enters our head. In our walking and journeying, be the first thought that enters our head. In our working and serving, be the first thought that enters our head. In our sowing and harvesting, be the first thought that enters our head. In our rejoicing and sorrowing, be the first thought that enters our head. In our resting and sleeping, be the first thought that enters our head. Amen. And now I invite you to join with me in the prayers of the people. But before doing that, I have some great news to share with you. And that is first to say thank you to Matthew Ware, who has been playing our organ for the last several weeks. We really appreciate what you have done, Matthew. We really appreciate how you have enriched our time of worship with your musical skills. However, next week, if all goes as planned, the organ music you hear will be recorded by Dennis Duda. I saw Dennis this week and he thinks he's feeling up to it. So at some point in the coming week, he will come in and he will record music for next Sunday's service of worship. And so continue to keep Dennis in your prayers uh, the healing process goes on, but he has a ways to go yet. So remember him in your prayers this morning and every day, and also 
Diane and Lauren and Kristen. And now let's go to prayer. Bread for all, bread and all, we pray, O God. When we are orphaned, hungry, oppressed, faith for all, faith in all, we pray, O God, to recognize faith in other ways, other texts, and other worshiping communities. Grace for all, grace in all, we pray, O oh God. When we are estranged, alienated, scorned, wisdom for all, wisdom in all. When we are disabled, neglected, impoverished, Spirit for all, spirit in all, we pray, O oh God, for earth, our children, and a shared common future. We lift up our gratitude for your gifts in our lives, your presence and faithful love, O oh God. We pause now to lift up the names of specific people, places, and circumstances in particular need of your grace. Gracious God, as you have promised, may it come to pass. We pray in Christ's name and offer the prayer he offered, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Normally, at this time, during our service of worship, we would take up our offering to support the ministry of this church. I want to thank all of you who have reached out to take care of our financial needs during this time. You have done it generously and graciously and in so many ways. Thank you for what you've done. But we need to continue to do that, and so I will want to remind you of ways in which you may do that. You can do that by signing up for our church's online giving program called Tithely. Simply go to our website and go to the donate button, and you can sign up there. You can also sign up through your, your own bank's bill pay program, or you can mail your, uh, your donation in to the church. So those are three ways that you can continue to support your church. At this time, let us pause for a moment and listen to some music from Darren Jellison. This is a song called I Can Only Imagine by Mercy Me. What it will be like When I walk By your side I can only imagine What my eyes will see When your face Is before me I can only imagine Yeah So 
Surrounded by your glory What will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak it all I can only imagine? I can only imagine I can only imagine When that day comes And I find myself Standing in the sun I can only imagine When all I will do Is forever Forever worship you I can only imagine Surrounded by your glory What will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? To my knees will I fall, will I sing hallelujah, will I be able to speak it all I can only imagine, yeah, I can only imagine, oh, 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 surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel, will I dance for you Jesus, or in all of you stand in your presence or to my knees will I fall will I sing hallelujah will I be able to speak it all I can only imagine yeah yeah I can only imagine I can only imagine Normally speaking, at this time, your gifts are brought forward and placed on this altar and dedicated to the purposes of God. It is important that we do that this morning. Not just that the giver might be blessed, but that your gift might be blessed and used wisely for the kingdom of God. Giver of life, in the same way bread is broken and shared for the benefit of all, so might our offerings of money, time, and giftedness be a breaking open of abundant love to the world. Amen. Okay.
And now we go forth grasping on to the fellowship of believers, the community of the church, knowing that in this community and in, in this fellowship, we find everlasting fellowship and support and compare compassion, laughter, and companionship, not only for us, but for those who wish to share it as well. Go forth in the name of Christ. Amen.